Antyalila, Chapter 10 All glories to Lord Chaitanya, who bears the mark of Srivats. All glories to Lord Chaitanya, who is eternal religion personified, and who is the jewel taken from Sachi's womb. Glories to Lord Chaitanya, who is Lord Krishna himself, and who enjoys pastimes of Sankirtan. Glories to Lord Chaitanya, who loves the devotees. Glories to Lord Chaitanya, who stands before the wicked, as all-devouring time. Glories to Lord Chaitanya and his devotees. Anyone who hears these narrations of Lord Chaitanya will attain pure devotional service. Manifesting the form of a sannyasi, the king of Vaikuntha enjoyed pastimes in this way with his devotees. One day, Lord Chaitanya happily sat down. Then Lord Advaita approached him. Advaita offered obeisances and then sat down next to the Lord. Smiling, Lord Chaitanya asked a question of Advaita. Lord Chaitanya cheerfully said, O oh, Acharya, please tell me, where did you go and what did you do? Advaita Acharya said, I saw Lord Jagannath, then I came to you. Lord Chaitanya said, After seeing Lord Jagannath, what else did you do? Please tell me. Advaita Acharya said, Before seeing Lord Jagannath, I circumambulated him five or seven times. Hearing the word circumambulated, Lord Chaitanya smiled. Smiling, Lord Chaitanya said, You are defeated. Then Advaita said, How am I defeated? Show me the reason, and you will have defeated me. Lord Chaitanya said, Hear how you are defeated. You performed a circumambulation. When you walked behind Lord Jagannath, then you cannot see him. When I see Lord Jagannath, my eyes do not go anywhere else. I only see Lord Jagannath's face and nothing else. Folding his hands, Lord Advaita said, In this way I am defeated by you. No one in the three worlds can eloquently talk like you. I say the truth. There is no one like you. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Great One. With these words I am defeated. Hearing these words, the circle of Vaishnavas smiled. Chanting Hari, they made a great tumult of auspicious sounds. Speaking very wonderfully in this way, Lord Chaitanya delighted Advaita Acharya. One day, with Lord Chaitanya, Gadadhar discussed his previous mantra initiation. Gadadhar said, The Ishta mantra, I say, does not stay very well in my mind. Please tell me that mantra again, then my heart will be happy. Lord Chaitanya said, Anyone who gives you that mantra again will become an offender. The person who gave you that mantra is the very life of both you and me. It is not right for me to tell you that mantra again. Then Gadadhar said, Then you cannot act on my guru's behalf. Lord Chaitanya said, Your guru is Pundarik Vidyaniti. By the Supreme Lord's arrangement, you will meet him again, and he will give you the mantra again. Then Lord Chaitanya, who knows everything, who is the crest jewel of they who know everything, said, Pundarik Vidyaniti will soon come to Orissa. In ten days he will come here to see me. Pundarik Vidyaniti always stays in my heart. I know that you will draw him to this place. Hearing... Srimad Bhagavatam from his dear devotee, Gadadhar's mouth. Lord Chaitanya would enjoy great happiness. Hearing Gadadhar read Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Chaitanya would manifest many symptoms of ecstatic love. A hundred times, Lord Chaitanya attentively heard Gadadhar read the story of Prahlad and the story of Dhruva. Lord Chaitanya had no time for any other activity. Again and again, he heard and chanted the names and glories of Lord Krishna. Saintly Gadadhar would read Srimad Bhagavatam and Swarup Damodar would sing Kirtan. When Swarup Damodar sang songs glorifying Lord Krishna, Lord Chaitanya would dance in ecstasy. Tears, trembling, laughter, fainting, roaring, and standing up of the body's hairs were only some of the symptoms of ecstatic love Lord Chaitanya manifested. All these ecstatic symptoms became personified in Lord Chaitanya. Manifesting them all, Lord Chaitanya danced. Hearing Swarup Damodar's loud kirtan, Lord Chaitanya could not stay in external consciousness. Moment after moment, he fell to the ground. No other sannyasi associate of the Lord was Swarup Damodar's equal. In the same way, he loved Parmananda Puri Goswami, 
So Lord Chaitanya loved Swarup Damodar. Swarup Damodar's singing was like nectar. Hearing it, Lord Chaitanya would dance. Disguised, he would wander in the city. No one had the power to recognize who he was. He sang kirtan like Narada, who plays the tumburu. He would make Lord Chaitanya dance. Who was more glorious and fortunate than him? Among the sannyasis, none was dear to Lord Chaitanya like Swarup Damodar. Only Parmananda Puri was like him. Swarup Damodar and Parmananda Puri were the two foremost sannyasi associates of Lord Chaitanya. They always stayed with the Lord. They carried the Lord's sannyas danda. Parmananda Puri was fond of meditation and Swarup Damodar was fond of kirtan. These two sannyasis were like the two arms on the body of the sannyasi Sri Chaitanya. Accompanied by Swarup Damodar, Lord Chaitanya enjoyed pastimes of Sankirtan day and night. Whether sleeping, eating, or walking, Lord Chaitanya would not leave Swarup Damodar even for a moment. In his previous ashram as a householder, Swarup Damodar's name was Purushottamacharya, and his close friend was Pundarik Vidyanidhi. When Lord Chaitanya walked on the path, Swarup Damodar would sing. Then Lord Chaitanya, dancing in ecstasy, no longer knew where the path was. In Swarup Damodar's company, Lord Chaitanya would fall into ecstasy. No longer was he aware of the external world. Lord Chaitanya no longer knew what was water, what was dry land, what was a forest, and what were bushes. He roared in ecstasy. Swarup Damodar would sing kirtan. When Lord Chaitanya would fall into bushes or in the forest, Swarup Damodar would pick him up. Swarup Damodar's good fortune had no limit. No one was Swarup Damodar's equal. One day, as he was wrapped in ecstasy, Lord Chaitanya fell into a well. Seeing this, Advaita Acharya and the other devotees became bewildered. With head in hand, they all wept. Tasting the nectar of ecstatic love and devotion, Lord Chaitanya was not aware of the external world. Now, like a child, he fell into a well. There he floated. In a moment, the well became filled with fresh butter. There was not even a scratch anywhere on the Lord's graceful body. How were these wonders manifested? They were manifested by the power of ecstatic devotion. Seeing that thorns had not pricked the Lord's body, the Vaishnavas danced. Within a few moments, Advaita Acharya and the other devotees had pulled Lord Chaitanya out of the well. No one knew how Lord Chaitanya had fallen into the well. Can you say, can you say, Lord Chaitanya asked. Tasting the nectar of ecstatic love and devotion, Lord Chaitanya was not aware of the external world. Acting as if he did not already know everything, he questioned everyone. Hearing these nectar words from the Lord's graceful mouth, Advaita and the devotees floated in bliss. Tasting the nectar of ecstatic devotion, Lord Chaitanya enjoyed pastimes like these. In his heart, he knew Pundarik Vidyanidhi would soon come. The moment Pundarik Vidyanidhi came, Lord Chaitanya at once knew of it in his heart. At once the Lord arranged to see him. Seeing Pundarik Vidyanidhi, Lord Chaitanya laughed. Father has come, Father has come, he said. Pundarik Vidyanidhi became wild with bliss. All auspiciousness filled his heart. Lord Chaitanya Narayan, who dearly loves his devotees, embraced Pundarik Vidyanidhi to his chest and wept. In the four directions the Vaishnavas wept. The bliss of Vaikuntha was suddenly manifested there. Moment after moment, the love Lord Chaitanya and the devotees felt for Pundarik Vidyanidhi grew stronger and stronger. Pundarik Vidyanidhi's old friend Swarup Damodar was there with Lord Chaitanya. The two old friends saw each other. Seeing each other, two old friends grasped the dust of each other's feet. They embraced. Playing, they pushed each other. The two powerful men played and laughed. Lord Chaitanya was pleased. Manifesting external consciousness, Lord Chaitanya came to Pundarik Vidyanidhi. Please stay for some days in Jagannath Puri. Hearing this, Pundarik Vidyanidhi was very pleased. Thinking himself very fortunate, he always stayed with the Lord. Then with great love, Gadadhar again accepted his Ishta Mantra from Pundarik Vidyanidhi. How can I describe the glories of Pundarik Vidyanidhi, whose glories were sung by Advaita, Srivas, Marari Gupta, and Haridas Thakur, and whose disciple was Gadadhar, a disciple who had the most exalted kind of ecstatic spiritual love? No other Vaishnava was like Pundarik Vidyanidhi. The devotees could not describe all the devotional activities Pundarik Vidyanidhi performed with his body, mind, and words. Not even a single sesame seed's worth of false ego was present in his body. What was the great wonder of mercy that Lord Chaitanya gave to him? I have no power to understand it. Having heard some stories from Gadadhar's mouth, I will write a little about how Pundarik Vidyanidhi was dear to Lord Krishna. Making his home at Yameshwar by the seashore, Pundarik Vidyanidhi stayed near Lord Chaitanya. Thus staying in Jagannath Puri, he regularly saw Lord Jagannath. Swarup Damodar loved him dearly. 
Together the two friends would see Lord Jagannath. Together they joyfully tasted the nectar of narrations about Lord Krishna. Then came the festival called Odana Sasti, when Lord Jagannath received new garments. On that day, according to their own desires, the devotees offered new starch garments to Lord Jagannath. Lord Chaitanya and the devotees went to see the festival of offering new garments. The Murdangas, Muharis, conch shells, Dundubis, Kahalas, Dakas, Dagadas, and Kadas made a great musical sound. Numberless different garments of many kinds were offered on that day. Then there was a festival from the sixth day, Sasti, until the end of the month of Mag. Seeing this festival from the offering of garments to the end of night, Lord Chaitanya and his devotees floated in ecstatic love. Lord Chaitanya was both the worshipper and the object of worship, but without his mercy, no one could understand this. Manifesting the wooden form of Lord Jagannath, the Lord sat on his throne. Manifesting the form of a sannyasi, the Lord worshipped himself. Many silken garments were offered, garments of white, yellow, blue, and many other colors, splendid garments, garments sewn with gold and pearls. After the garments were offered, there was an offering of flower ornaments. There were flower bracelets, flower crowns, and flower garlands. With incense, lamps, and all the sixteen kinds of offerings now scented with flower fragrances, Arti was offered to Lord Jagannath. Many different kinds of food were offered to him. After seeing this festival with his associates, Lord Chaitanya happily returned to his home. At home he bid good night to his associates, then the Lord happily retired to his own room. When everyone had left, Pundarik Vidyaniti stayed there with Swarup Damodar. The two of them spoke from their hearts. Without deception they told everything. A doubt about Lord Jagannath's accepting new starch garments took birth within Pundarik Vidyaniti. He asked Swarup Damodar, why do they give new starched garments to the Lord? Why, ignoring the Shrutis and Smritis, and without even washing them first, in this country do they offer starched garments to the Lord? Swarup Damodar replied, Listen to this explanation. There is no fault in the custom of this country. Persons who know the Shruti and Smriti may not always observe this festival. Still, if the Supreme Lord did not desire this festival, why did he not forbid the king to observe it? Then Pundarik Vidyaniti said, Good, the Supreme Lord may do whatever he wishes, but how can the Lord's servants imitate him and do whatever they wish? Why would Lord Jagannath's priests, decorators, servants, and message carriers offer him impure, unwashed, starched garments? Lord Jagannath is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He may do whatever he wishes, but does that mean that everyone else may do whatever they wish? When one touches an unwashed, starched garment, one must immediately wash his hand. Why would an intelligent person not follow this rule? Not thinking of this, the king's representative puts unwashed, starched garments on the supreme king's head. Then Swarup Damodar said, Listen, O oh my brother, I think there is nothing wrong with the Odanasasti festival. The supreme personality of Godhead has descended to this world as Lord Jagannath. He does not have to think about rules and prohibitions. Pundarik Vidyaniti said, O oh my brother, please hear my words. Lord Jagannath is indeed the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If he jumps over any rule or prohibition, he is not to be blamed. He is indeed the Supreme Personality of Godhead staying in Jagannath Puri. He indeed may neglect all ordinary customs. He is indeed the Supreme Personality of Godhead descended to this world. After this conversation, the two friends walked on the path. They smiled, they laughed and laughed. Holding hands, the two friends laughed at the idea that Lord Jagannath's servants could have been at fault. They knew the power and glory of the Lord's servants. They knew how much Lord Krishna loves his servants. Sometimes Lord Krishna bewilders his servant. Then with a merciful heart, the Lord breaks that bewilderment. The Lord had personally bewildered Pundarik Vidyaniti. Please hear how the Lord mercifully broke that bewilderment. The two friends left the room and happily performed their duties for Lord Krishna. After accepting a meal, they returned to Lord Chaitanya's place. Returning to the Lord's place, they fell asleep. Lord Chaitanya knows everything. Manifesting the form of Lord Jagannath, he entered Pundarik Vidyaniti's dream. Pundarik Vidyaniti saw Lord Jagannath enter that dream. Lord Jagannath angrily stared at Pundarik Vidyaniti. Then he slapped Pundarik's face. Both brothers, Jagannath and Balaram, violently slapped Pundarik's cheeks. Pundarik Vidyaniti was in pain. Krishna, save me, he called out. Please forgive my offense. He begged and fell at the Lord's feet. He asked, O Lord, what is my offense that you beat me? The Lord said, 
Your offenses have no end. You do not know anything about the exalted nature of me or my servants, even though you stay in this place. Why do you stay in this place? It will ruin your status in the upper castes. You should go to your own home. Then you will protect the upper caste status. You thought there was something wrong with my festival? You treat me like the Supreme Lord, but you criticize my servants? You saw a mistake in the offering of starched, unwashed garments? In the dream, Pundarik Vidyanidhi became terrified at heart. Holding the Lord's graceful feet to his head, he wept. He said, Lord, please forgive the sinner's offenses. I am an offender. I am an offender. Lord, this I tell you. Lord, you have punished this mouth that mocked your servants. Lord, in this way, you have been very good to me. An auspicious day now dawns for me. With your own graceful hand, you slapped my mouth and cheeks. Then Lord Jagannath said, Seeing that you are my servant, I have been kind to you. That is why I punished you. In that dream, two lords cast an affectionate glance at Pundarik Vidyanidhi. Then the two brothers, Lord Jagannath and Lord Balaram, returned to their temple. After seeing this dream, Pundarik Vidyanidhi woke up. Seeing on his cheeks the marks of the Lord's slaps, Pundarik smiled. Seeing on his cheeks the marks of Lord Jagannath's slaps, Pundarik Vidyanidhi said, This is auspicious. This is very auspicious. I have committed an offense, and the Lord has punished me. I am fortunate the Lord punished me only slightly. Look, look at Pundarik Vidyanidhi's glories. The Supreme Lord's mercy to his servant is very great. To teach him, the Lord never even punished his own son Pradumna in the same way. Neither did the Lord punish Sita, Rukmini, or Satyabhama, his other personal associates, or the hosts of demigods and the demigoddesses in such a way. It is not often that the Lord will directly appear before someone in a dream and mercifully punish him for an offense. A devotee punished in a dream is very fortunate. When he awakes, his offenses are no more. If he is mercifully punished by the Lord in a dream, a devotee attains all that is good in this world. In this world, no one is fortunate like him. The Lord never speaks in dreams to non-devotees. Please consider this. The Yavanas may commit many acts of blasphemy and violence. They may see many dreams. Even though he sees their acts of blasphemy and violence, the Supreme Lord never punishes them in dreams. Moment after moment, the Yavanas commit offenses to the saintly Brahmins. Because of these offenses, the Yavanas suffer in this world and the next. Still, the Supreme Lord will not punish the non-devotee sinners in a dream. If the Supreme Lord appears before someone in a dream, that person is very fortunate. That is my opinion. Everyone should see the great mercy the Supreme Lord gave to Pundarik Vidyanidhi by personally punishing him in a dream. At dawn, Pundarik Vidyanidhi awakened. On his cheeks, he saw the marks where the Lord's two hands had slapped him. Every day, he visited Swarup Damodar, and then the two of them went to see Lord Jagannath. As every day he went to visit Swarup Damodar, so on this day Pundarik Vidyanidhi also went. He had something to tell him. Swarup Damodar said, This morning, why did you not rise from sleep and go to see Lord Jagannath? Pundarik Vidyanidhi said, My brother, I have come here because there is something I must say. Then Swarup Damodar saw on Pundarik Vidyanidhi's cheeks the prominent marks of the Lord's slaps. Swarup Damodar asked, Tell me, how did you get those marks on your cheeks? Smiling, saintly Pundarik Vidyanidhi said, Listen, my brother, yesterday I had a doubt. I criticized the offering of starched, unwashed garments to the Lord. For that, I was hit on the cheeks. Today you can see the marks. Lord Jagannath and Lord Balaram came to me in a dream. They both slapped me. They would not stop. Saying, You criticized the offering of garments to us. They both slapped my cheeks. They struck my cheeks with the rings on their fingers. I cannot say anything more. Embarrassed, I cannot say anything more. Today my cheeks have become glorious. Pundarik Vidyanidhi had no power to say anything more. Oh, my brothers, in your hearts, please know that he was very fortunate. I was never fortunate to be punished in this way. I remained fallen in a blind well. Seeing Lord Jagannath's great love for Pundarik Vidyanidhi, saintly Swarup Damodar floated in bliss. A true friend is happy to see his friend become fortunate. The two friends laughed with great joy. Swarup Damodar said, Listen, oh my brother, I have never seen or heard of any punishment as wonderful as this. I have never seen or heard that the Supreme Lord would appear before someone in a dream and personally give punishment. In this way, the two friends floated in bliss. Day and night, tasting the nectar of narrations about Lord Krishna, they did not know anything of the external world. In this way, Pundarik Vidyanidhi was very glorious. That is why Lord Chaitanya called him Father. 
Afraid that his feet would touch her, Pundarik Vidyaniti never bathed in the Ganga. He only saw her and drank her water. Lord Chaitanya would chant Pundarik Vidyaniti's name. He would say, Father Pundarik, and weep. Anyone who hears these activities of Pundarik Vidyaniti will attain Lord Krishna's lotus feet. That is inevitable. Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are my life and soul. I, Vrindavan Das, humbly offer this song at their lotus feet. Thus ends Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. This presentation has been an offering to His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who revealed Lord Chaitanya's pastimes to the world.